In the mountains of Costa Rica, a helicopter drops a team of scientists led by Dr. Morbius at the entrance of a cave. Morbius suffers from a rare blood disease and needs canes to walk, so he asks his team to set up the trap they've brought. Then he comes forward and raises his bleeding hand to lower all the bats in the cave into the trap. The team and the pilot run in fear, but Morbius just waits. This all started 25 years ago in Greece. Young Morbius lives in the hospital, where Dr. Nicholas introduces him to a boy that Morbius nicknames Milo. Both kids suffer from the same rare blood disease and immediately hit it off, sharing the same wish to be normal. While they're chatting, Milo's machine suddenly malfunctions and he passes out. Morbius takes a spring from his pen to quickly fix the machine and Milo immediately wakes up. Nicholas is very impressed by Morbius' intelligence and decides to send him to an exclusive school in New York, but Morbius only accepts after Nicholas promises to take care of Milo. Before leaving Morbius writes a letter to Milo, promising he'll find a cure for their disease. The letter accidentally falls from Milo's hands and he goes to find it, only to discover some mean kids from the school nearby are reading it and making fun of him for it. The group begins beating Milo up for fun, but thankfully Nicholas arrives and scares them away before they can cause serious damage, and he has to stop Milo from trying to get revenge too. Morbius manages to get his doctoral degree when he turns 19 and eventually develops an artificial blood that saves millions of lives. The King of Sweden wants to give him the Nobel Prize but he turns it down because he discovered the artificial blood by accident while trying to find a cure for his illness. Back to the present, Morbius returns to his job at the hospital, where he's approached by his co-worker Dr. Martin to have a private talk. While running some tests on him, she asks about Morbius' crazy project to remix human DNA with bat DNA, which is being funded by Milo. Morbius pretends he doesn't know what she's talking about, but Martin reveals Morbius' tank full of Colombian bats, so he shares the truth. These bats are the only mammals on Earth that feed exclusively on blood, so Morbius thinks their special saliva may be the solution to cure his illness. Martin is skeptical of the idea and worries about the morals behind such an experiment, but Morbius goes ahead and tests his new serum on a lab rat. Unfortunately the poor rat dies. At that moment one of Morbius' patients starts having a seizure, so they rush to her room and have no choice but to induce a coma to save her from a possible stroke. When Martin checks the lab again, she's surprised to see the rat moving, meaning the serum does work. Sometime later, Morbius meets with Milo to tell him about his breakthrough and ask for more money. Since this experiment isn't legal, he needs to do it on international waters, and Milo gladly will pay for everything if it means finding a cure. A few days later, Morbius takes Martin with him on the trip to international waters. Morbius manages to make a new, more advanced serum and Martin injects it into Morbius' spine. She also buckles him up as his body starts shaking. At that moment, a crew member comes to the lab to check on them and while Martin argues with him, Morbius manages to break free. Martin and the guard enter the isolation room and are shocked to discover Morbius crawling on the ceiling with a monstrous face. The guard tries to shoot him, but Morbius moves incredibly fast and jumps on him to feed while ignoring Martin's pleas to stop. Suddenly the ship's alarm begins ringing, and Morbius' sensitive ears hurt so much that he starts to panic and damage the insulation room. The rest of the security crew arrives and Martin tries to stop them, but they push her away, knocking her out. At that moment Morbius manages to finish breaking the glass and jumps out of the room to show off his new vampiric powers, which allow him to dodge bullets and move quickly to kill the guards without mercy. A few survivors run away and lock the door, however Morbius is also incredibly strong now and easily breaks it down. Then Morbius crawls on the ceiling again, taking his sweet time to capture the guards one by one and kill them all. Once the whole crew is dead and Morbius has fed enough, his body transforms back into its human shape, so he rushes to check himself in the mirror. It's clear to see he's finally cured. Afterward, Morbius makes sure Martin is alright and checks the surveillance cameras. He's so disturbed to see what he's done that he throws up, but then he makes a mayday call, takes the serums, and jumps into the sea. The next morning, two FBI agents arrive at the ship to investigate the crime scene, but unfortunately Morbius has deleted all the security recordings and Martin is still unconscious. The case soon appears on the news, which is seen by Nicholas and Milo. Sometime later, Morbius returns to the hospital, and after checking on his patients, he goes to his lab to leave the serums. His body soon starts failing again, so he rushes into the fridge to drink the artificial blood he's created, that way he can feed without having to kill anyone. Next he starts testing his abilities, he is fast, athletic, can climb anything and jump all over the place. When he enters the tank with the bats, they fly around him respectfully, and Morbius feels a kinship with them he also discovers that he's developed echolocation just like a bat, so he tests it by throwing a ball around the room and catching it with his eyes closed. Unfortunately these powers only last as long as he feeds. The artificial blood keeps him stable for 6 hours, but the timing is growing shorter and he knows he'll need real blood soon. To test this further, he locks himself up in an isolated room. A few hours later, Milo comes to visit and finds him in an extremely weak state. Morbius asks for blood by writing it on the glass with his own, so Milo brings him a few bags from the freezer. As soon as he feeds, Morbius recovers and is strong again, and Milo is amazed by this cure. However when Milo asks to be injected too, 
Morbius tells him he's made a mistake and that this cure is a curse. Milo keeps insisting, so Morbius gets aggressive and kicks him out. Meanwhile Martine finally wakes up and is visited by the FBI agents, who show her disturbing pictures of the bodies on the ship. However Martine pretends she doesn't remember what happened that night. Later in the evening, a nurse is working late and notices the lights behaving strangely. She begins running away in fear, but she's still caught by a vampiric creature that kills her. When the body is found in the morning, Morbius is as surprised as his co-workers and thinks he may have done it. Questioning his own sanity, Morbius runs to the lab and takes a few fake blood bags before leaving. On his way out, he's confronted by the FBI agents, who ask questions about the experiments and decide to arrest him. Morbius immediately defends himself and knocks them down with just a few moves, then he escapes by climbing the stairs as he dodges bullets from a cop. He makes it to the hospital roof and is shocked to feel the air from the AC unit stronger than usual, but before he can test what it means, he's arrested by the agents. At the Manhattan Detention Center, Morbius is allowed to keep his notes and he makes the math to discover his feeding time went from every 6 hours to 4 hours 22 minutes. When he's taken to the interrogation room, he's handcuffed to the table, and the agents come in with holy water just in case. They blame him for the deaths on the ship and also the nurse, but Morbius is starting to lose control and begs for his bags of fake blood. The agents don't take him seriously and send him back to his cell. Later on, Morbius is visited by Milo, who offers his support and gives him a pack of artificial blood before he leaves. However Morbius notices Milo has forgotten his cane and discovers the truth. Milo stole the serum and injected himself with it, in fact he was the one who killed the nurse. Once his way out, Milo stops pretending he's disabled and walks away with perfect reflexes. Furious, Morbius drinks the blood and transforms into his vampiric form to escape the cell through the window. Then he jumps all over the city and uses his echolocation to hear Milo attack the owner of a newspaper stand. Morbius immediately rushes to confront Milo on the street, calling him a monster. However Milo thinks this power is amazing and they finally can do whatever they want, so he attacks Morbius to get him off his back. A fierce fight ensues and as the vampires move to attack each other, they end up crashing into the subway station, causing citizens to run in panic. After exchanging a few more hits, Milo celebrates the fact they've evolved, but Morbius promises to find a way to fix this. At that moment the police show up to arrest them both, however Milo moves fast and kills them all in seconds before doing a little victory dance. Next, Milo attacks Morbius again as the train comes closer. Morbius can feel the fast air caused by the train and jumps in front of it to fly through the tunnels and escape. The next day, Martine feels like someone is following her through the city, so she enters a shop to escape through the back door. The one following her is an agent, who now has lost her in the crowd. Martine takes the bus and sees in the newspaper that Morbius is a wanted man, only for him to suddenly appear behind her. She believes him when he says Milo took the serum and is the actual killer, then they get off the bus to stop at a cafe. While they chat, Morbius overhears two criminals mentioning a lab, so he asks Martine for a few things before following them. After taking the artificial blood Martine got for him, Morbius finds the thugs inside a lab where they counterfeit money. When he nicely asks them to give him their lab, a thug tries attacking him with a knife, but Morbius breaks his hand and scares them all away as he calls himself Venom. While Morbius uses the pieces of the printing machines to make the devices he needs to work on a cure for vampirism, Milo is getting ready for a night out. After dancing around the apartment while getting dressed, he goes to a nightclub and flirts with a beautiful woman, but a guy says he saw her first and pushes him away. Milo manages to keep his powers under control and leaves, however he waits outside and when the guy comes out with his friends, he kills them all. Moments later, Martine goes to Morbius hospital lab to grab a few things and finds Milo there asking for his friend. Martine swears she doesn't know where Morbius is and makes him leave without a fuzz. Meanwhile the FBI agents break into Martine's place, but neither she nor her cat are there. It's then revealed that Martine is hiding with Morbius at the new lab and she brought her cat with her. While trying to feed it, she accidentally cuts her finger, and Morbius has to make an extra effort not to react to the smell of her blood. Afterward, they share a moment on the roof and kiss, unaware that Milo watches them from afar. The next morning, the FBI agents find the dead guys outside the bar and check the security cameras to discover Milo is the actual murderer. Nicholas sees the update on the news and goes to see Milo, asking him to stop killing people. Milo is tired of the doctor's pity and after pointing out Morbius always was the favorite, he attacks Nicholas, leaving him seriously wounded. Meanwhile Morbius manages to develop an antibody that will harm only a vampiric body. He makes two bottles, one for Milo and one for Martine to use on himself when the time comes. At that moment, he gets a call from Nicholas asking for help and he rushes to Milo's apartment. Unfortunately Nicholas only manages to beg Morbius to stop Milo before dying. At the same time, Milo kidnaps Martine and makes her say Morbius' name until he hears it with his power. After finding their location with his echolocation, Morbius flies through the city and finds Martine on a roof, bleeding from an injury by Milo. She wants Morbius to feed on her so she can die being useful, but Morbius kisses her instead, causing a drop of his own blood to fall in her mouth. At that moment Martine dies, so Morbius gives in to his fury and feeds on her. 
Then Milo appears on the roof too, so Morbius jumps on him and both fall off the edge. On their way down, the vampires continue to attack each other and crash through a building a few times before they begin falling again. Milo hits Morbius extra hard and causes him to land on a platform, where he grabs him by the leg and throws him against a glowing sign. When Morbius falls one more time, Milo jumps on him and drags him against a building before they hit the street, only to go through the pavement and land on a tunnel. While Milo laughs like a maniac, Morbius sends a powerful echolocation wave through the tunnel with his voice and then through the water with his hand. Suddenly an army of bats shows up to help Morbius up, and when Milo tries to kill him with a metal rod, Morbius sends the bats after him. As the little beasts hold Milo down, Morbius comes through and injects him with the antibody, causing Milo to turn human and apologize before dying. At that moment the FBI agents arrive with the police, so Morbius hides among the bats to fly out of the tunnel safely. Meanwhile on the roof, Martine wakes up and reveals she's a vampire too. Sometime later, a mysterious spell drops Spider-Man's enemy Vulture in the local prison. Since he came from another universe, nobody knows who he is here and the police immediately release him. Soon Vulture manages to remake his villain costume and approaches Morbius to team up. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.